We begin tonight with the Mayor of London apparently at odds with his own party stance on the controversial use of spit hoods. The hoods, which are being trialled by the Meds, are put over the heads of suspects to prevent police from being spat at. Not so controversial, you may think, but Labour's Shadow Home Secretary and MP for Hackney, Diane Abbott, tweeted her opposition, saying there was no evidence that spit hoods are necessary or useful. Our political correspondent Simon Harris has this. As you can see, it's a fine mesh. These are the spit hoods being issued to all frontline police in Berkshire and Buckinghamshire. It gets put on um, from the rear. They're normally placed over a suspect's head, but here it's a policeman demonstrating how they're worn. Police patrols in London don't have spit guards as they're officially known, but a patrol dealing with a domestic row on the Isle of Dogs yesterday might have found one very useful. Two officers were trying to arrest a man in his 50s when it seems they were spat at. According to Scotland Yard, the suspect was thought to be infectious. Tower Hamlets police tweeted, two response team B officers blue lighted to St Thomas's Hospital for emergency care after being spat at by believed contagious male. Earlier, Shadow Home Secretary and Hackney MP Diane Abbott infuriated police when she tweeted, no evidence that spit hoods are necessary or useful. Scotland Yard Superintendent Roy Smith replied, would you be willing to meet one of my colleagues infected with hep C after being spat at? Diane Abbott later added, sorry, tweet has been misinterpreted. Police safety paramount. Happy to meet to discuss spit hoods. The risk of diseases being passed through saliva is low. However, even when the risk is low, some of these diseases are not curable. They're treatable, but not curable. So as an officer with a young family, children, do you want to take the chance? In July, a commuter at London Bridge Station filmed British transport police officers pinning down a 20-year-old man in a spit hood. The case is being investigated by the police complaints watchdog. Opponents of spit hoods say they increase the risk of a death in custody. Restraint, particularly prone restraint, carries the risk of asphyxia. It means police officers can't monitor somebody's face and how they're responding, and that is dangerous. Some Met officers are allowed to use spit hoods, but only in custody suites in five East London boroughs as part of a trial. What's important is our police service who work their socks off every day, police officers going out to work every day, uh, risking their personal safety and their livelihoods are looked after. That's why we've allowed spit holds to be introduced uh, in police stations. We'll look to see how the pilots work. Scotland Yard says last year there were almost 150 cases of police officers being spat at. More than 200 were bitten. It will be for the new commissioner to decide if spit hoods are given to all police in London. Simon Harris, ITV News, Scotland Yard. Now on the trains and on the tubes, commuters are facing a double dose of misery courtesy of the RMT union. It today announced fresh strikes on the underground and on Southern Rail. A 24-hour walkout on the Central Line begins at 9pm next Tuesday. And Southern Guards will strike from midnight for 24 hours on the Wednesday. My political correspondent Simon Harris joins me now. Simon, two disputes, one union and still no resolution in sight. The strike on Southern looked inevitable last night when the RMT walked out of talks with Southern's parent company, GTR. This is the long-running dispute over the role of guards and the decision to put drivers in charge of closing train doors. The strike on the central line on the same day is a repeat of a walkout last month over plans to transfer eight drivers from depots in East London to West London against their wishes. London Underground says there's not enough work for them on the central line and it wants them to fill driver vacancies on the district line. But the RMT says some of them are very senior and can't afford to make the move. And what's more, London Underground should actually be hiring new drivers to fill the vacancies. Some of these people will have to leave the job, so they're going to have to recruit people anyway to fill those vacancies. Surely it's better that people be moved to jobs where they're needed than sit in Leytonstone doing nothing. But they won't be able to attend those jobs. They'll have to recruit people anyway. It's a choice between leaving... But isn't that part of the agreement that you have, that you can move staff around the entire network? We can move staff on certain lines, but that's strictly done on a seniority basis. It should be the most... The person who joined the latest would be the person that would have to move. And that's a long-standing agreement, and that's the agreement that management have ripped up. 
The strike on Southern will have some impact. The company reckons about a quarter of its trains won't run, but it is only the RMT at the moment. Leaders of the drivers' union, ASLEF, have reached an agreement with Southern. That's being put to the 1,000 drivers on Southern, and the result of that ballot should be known tomorrow. All right, Simon, thank you. But first, have you thought months of misery for Southern Rail's half a million passengers was over? Think again. The drivers union, ASLEF, announced today its members have rejected the deal on the table from Southern. That's despite union leaders agreeing to that deal two weeks ago. It means a dispute over the role of drivers on trains is effectively back to square one. Our political correspondent Simon Harris has the story. My people are giving up wages and money and overtime to fight for something they believe in on behalf of other people. The unions need to really engage with us and get round the table. We are pleased to announce that ASLEF and GTR Southern have reached an agreement. After months of misery for commuters, last month's deal brokered by the TUC looked like a breakthrough. But today, members of the drivers' union refused to back it. The outcome of the ballot is a huge blow to union leaders here at ASLEF headquarters. They spent more than 10 days negotiating a deal which they couldn't sell to their members. Not surprisingly, perhaps, they didn't want to talk to us today. In a statement, General Secretary Mick Whelan said, we understand and support the decision arrived at democratically by our members and will now work to deliver a resolution in line with their expectations. It wasn't immediately clear whether that means commuters can expect even more strikes. I do think the Southern people who work for Southern aren't prepared to come into the 21st century. You never get this in any other type of profession. I don't really get why they're, why they're striking all the time. I think it's a joke. They're putting themselves way ahead of the passengers that ultimately keep them employed. The dispute began when guards, members of the rival RMT union, went on strike in April. The drivers only joined the industrial action in December and the RMT regarded Aslef's deal as a shocking betrayal. They're not surprised at all that they've decided to reject the, the offer because it didn't resolve the issues at the core of the dispute, which was about safety on the trains. You must be deliriously happy. I want to see a situation where we can get a resolution to this long-run dispute. Thousands and thousands of people depend on this service to get to work every day and they've been put through misery for the last eight or nine months and it is really important that we bring this to dispute to an end as quickly as we possible so this is not good news today. Just when it looked as if peace had broken out, the dispute has been reignited. As left, next move is unclear. The RMT does know where it's going. Its members on Southern will strike on Wednesday. Well, what a lot of commuters will want to know is where does this exactly leave those half a million Southern Rail passengers? Facing a great deal of uncertainty tonight and the possibility that commuting on Southern will be as unreliable in 2017 as it was in 2016. When the guards or on board supervisors, as they're, as they're now known, go on strike, as they will do on Wednesday, Southern reckons it can run about three quarters of its trains. When the drivers go on strike, the entire timetable comes to a standstill. As this next move, we don't know. Southern says it wants to talk to the union to try to understand why the drivers rejected the deal. But the company does have one other weapon in its armoury. Before the failed deal, it was planning to take Aslef to the Supreme Court to try to get the strikes declared illegal. That legal action was put on hold, but it could be resurrected. OK, Simon, thanks very much.